Hi friends, welcome. Mr. Madsen here. I'm the counselor at Vern Duncan Elementary and I'm going to share some lessons with you today. We're going to continue with a series of lessons from our second step curriculum called the Child Protection Unit or CPU for short. The focus of these lessons is on how to be safe or safety. First, just a couple of expectations. Number one, I'd like you to be an active listener. That means I want you to find a place that you can listen without distraction, if possible. I know that can be hard in these times when we have um, shared workspaces, but I want you to try because you'll get the most out of the lesson. I also want you to participate as if we were in your classroom right now. Okay, So that means when I ask a question, I want you to think about an answer and maybe even say it out loud. And if there's an adult or someone like an older sibling or someone that can watch the lesson with you, with you that would be awesome. That way, if you had any questions, they could help you understand. They could explain it. So quick review. Who keeps you safe? We've talked about this, and we discovered that it's the adults in our life that keep us safe, right? It's our parents, our grandparents, older siblings, neighbors, aunts and uncles, teachers, principals, school counselors, a whole bunch of people are all focused on helping us to be safe. They watch after us and they teach us the rules about safety. <clears throat> and why talk about safety? Well, the reason we repeat information and discuss information that you already know, like you might be thinking, I already know how to be safe. Why are we going to do this? It's because when we repeat things, it, it reinforces it and it puts it in that place in our brain called the hippocampus. Do you remember that spot? And that's the library. And it reinforces it so that if we're ever in a dangerous situation, we would know what to do, okay? And that's why it's important to con continue talking about safety. A good example of this is practicing a fire drill. We practice fire drills at school so that our bodies learn and know what to do in a dangerous situation, which might be a fire, okay? We don't even have to think about what to do when that fire alarm goes off. Our bodies just know. So here's an example of a fire alarm. So we get ready. Okay, so that wasn't so bad, was it? I hope it didn't bother you. I didn't want to traumatize you. But again, when you hear that sound, you automatically know what to do. You might have even gotten up and pushed your chair in at your table and started to leave the room because you heard that sound. Your body knows when I hear that sound, I need to get out of the building safely with my teacher and my class. So the ways to stay safe or the three R's. So these are the, the three R's that we've talked about before. And the first is recognize, asking ourselves is it safe and remember we're, we're looking at this picture here and the boy has a bike helmet in his hands he's getting ready to get on his bike and he looks over and there's another student who doesn't have a helmet and he's wondering is that safe so he's recognizing it doesn't look safe the next R is report tell an adult that you trust right away and this is just like when we talked about Kelso before if you have a big problem, something that's scary and dangerous, then you got to get help from an adult right away, okay? And that's what reporting is. And our last R, refuse. Saying words that mean no. And it's important that when we use these words and say no, that we remember to use a strong and respectful voice. And we might even use hand gestures like in this picture where she's holding her hand out and she's saying, no, I don't want to be a part of the dog pile, okay? So again, it's being strong and respectful, okay? And serious. That way people know that we mean what we say. So again, the three R's are recognize, report, and refuse. Okay. Let's review the always ask first rule. Remember, it's pretty simple. We always ask a parent or the person in charge first. So we're going to ask before we do anything. We're going to ask before we go anywhere. 
and we're going to ask before we take anything. And by that I mean if someone's offering us a gift, either a friend or a stranger, even a friend, we have to ask the person in charge first. So talking about safety is really, really important. And today we're going to focus on three types of touches that you might experience. But before that, I just want to remind you that your body belongs to you and that you get to decide, number one, who touches you, number two, where they touch you, number three, when they touch you, and number four, how they touch you, okay? And you can say no to any kind of touch that you do not like, even to someone older than you. I'm going to repeat that last part. You can say no to any kind of touch you do not like even to someone older than you. So the three types of touches are one is safe, good touches, and these are touches that show us that people care about us, like a pat on the back. Two, unsafe, bad touches. These are touches that hurt our bodies. Okay, they just hurt our bodies. And the third, unwanted touches. So these are touches that make us feel uncomfortable, and are they confusing? Okay, so if we start feeling uncomfortable or confused, that's a good signal that it's an unwanted touch. So here's some examples of some safe touches and some unsafe, uncomfortable touches. So a high five, that could be a safe touch. A handshake could be a safe touch. A fist bump could be a safe touch. A pat on the back could be a safe touch. And a hug from someone we know and trust. That could be a safe touch. Some unsafe, unwanted, punching or hitting, kicking, slapping, or pushing. Those are unwanted or uncomfortable, confusing touches. So here's a story that we're gonna look at today. Okay, so this is Kim, and she and her mom have just arrived at her grandpa's house. Kim has not seen her grandpa for a really long time. When Kim's grandpa first sees her, he reached out to pick her up and to put her on his lap like he used to when she was little. Hmm. Kim likes her grandpa, but the thought of sitting on his lap makes her feel uncomfortable. Her grandpa doesn't seem to notice, though, that she's uncomfortable and he tries to pull her onto his lap. Come on, he says, sit on my lap. Look at Kim's face and body and think about how she feels about the way her grandpa's touching her. What do you think? Hmm. If you were thinking, she doesn't like it, she's uncomfortable, you're right, give yourself a pat on the back. She does not like it. She's, she's even pulling away, right? Kim does feel uncomfortable, and this feeling helps her recognize and understand that her grandpa's touch is unwanted. So again, our feelings kind of help us understand if the touching we're receiving is a good touch or a bad touch or an unwanted touch. She recognized that feeling uncomfortable, feeling confused, that means it's unwanted. It's important to pay attention to uncomfortable feelings in your body. This is how, again, we recognize when a touch is unwanted. Is it okay for Kim to feel uncomfortable about sitting on her grandpa's lap? Think about that. Is that okay? If you're thinking, yes, you're absolutely right. It is, it is perfectly okay. Sitting on someone's lap can be safe, but Kim's body language shows that she recognizes that it's an unwanted touch. Kim doesn't want to sit on her grandpa's lap. It makes her feel uncomfortable, but she doesn't want to also hurt his feelings or disappoint him and she's really not sure what to say. Think about the words that Kim can use and the ways to stay safe to stop this unwanted touch. 
So what could she say? So remember, the ways to stay safe are recognize, which she's already done. She's recognized that that it's she's uncomfortable, and then report and refuse. So what do you think? If you were thinking she could just say, no thanks, Grandpa, and ask her mom for help, give yourself another pat on the back. That's exactly right. She recognized it was an unwanted touch, and she could just say, refuse, no thanks, Grandpa, and then ask her mom for help. Let's find out what Kim does. Kim's family made a plan for what to do when Kim found herself in an uncomfortable situation. Kim's mom taught her to use a signal when she's in an uncomfortable situation. Her mom said, if you're ever in a difficult situation, make this signal and I will know and I'll step in and help. Kim knows that if she makes this signal that her mom will step in and help her to refuse. Sometimes a person won't know he or she is touching you in an unwanted way. Using a stop signal can be a good way to tell that person a touch is unwanted or tell someone else you need help stopping an unwanted touch. Kim decides to use her signal as a way to ask her mom for help. Kim's mom notices the signal, so she, she asks Kim's grandpa to let Kim go. So she noticed it, and then she asked him to let her go. Kim's mom then explained to her grandpa that Kim's too big to sit on his lap. Kim offers to shake hands instead, and Kim's grandpa thinks this is a great idea, and the two of them shake hands. Problem solved, okay? So I want to talk a little bit about this idea called consent or permission. What is consent? What is permission? If you're thinking someone saying yes or no to be allowed to do something, you're absolutely right. It's getting permission. So here's a short little video about consent that I want you to watch, and then we'll talk some more. Consent for kids. This is you. Okay, it doesn't look exactly like you, but let's say it's you. This is your body, and you get to decide what you do with your body. No one else is entitled to tell you what to do with your body. Not your friends, not strangers, not adults you know. No one is entitled to decide what you do with your body. Except you. That's called bodily autonomy, by the way. And that's what consent is all about. Everyone is different. Some people love to hug. And some people hate hugs. And each person gets to decide what they're comfortable with. Can a hug-loving person just start hugging someone at random? Nope. They need consent. How do people know if they have consent? They ask. Would you like a hug? Yes, I would. Can I hold your hand? I'd rather not. Okay. If a person doesn't say yes... Can I hug you? Um, I, uh... Then they haven't given their consent. It's really pretty simple. Ask for consent. Listen to the answer. By the way, if a person bribes someone or threatens someone to say yes, that's not consent. Sometimes adults will try to tell a kid what to do with their body. Go kiss Aunt Doris goodbye. But the kid still gets to decide. No thanks, that makes me uncomfortable. I'll just wave goodbye. Some things kids can't consent to. They can't enter into legal contracts. They can't vote. And they can't consent to sexual stuff, because they're kids. So if an adult does something that kids can't consent to, that's not okay. 
the adult is wrong and it's not the kid's fault and that's when it's most important to tell a trusted adult like a teacher why because it's your body and no one else is entitled to tell you what to do with it practice consent okay so there are three parts to consent or permission the first part is asking so you might ask can i give you a high five that's an example the next part is to listen okay so you ask then you listen you listen for a yes or you listen for a no and if they go hmm not sure that's a no okay if it's not if it's not the word yes then it's automatically a no don't do it okay and the third part to consent is tell or report okay so if someone doesn't respect your boundaries I want you to tell an adult right away an adult you trust okay so say they ask you in our example can I give you a high five and you say no or you say hmm not so sure and they do it anyway that's a time to tell an adult you trust to get help so times to ask for consent or permission are anytime you're going to touch another person anytime this could be a hug a high five a handshake a kiss with a family member anytime you're going to touch another person you need to ask permission or ask for consent you need to ask for permission to borrow something and you need to ask if you're going to share something like would you like to use my color pencils if you don't ask then you can't make an assumption that they're going to say yes you have to assume no okay okay in today's story um, our main person had a signal that she gave her mom so i want to talk a little bit about having a signal or actually a code word that you can use. So I want you tonight to talk with your parents about both a, having a signal and a code word. The signal you can use when you are with them so they can see you give the signal, okay? And it can be any kind of a signal, okay? Anything that you can think of um, that, that would be helpful, okay? Um, but I want you to also think about a code word, okay? And the code word can be anything that you want. Like for example, um, I can tell you the code word that I used with my kids because they're all adults now. And our code word was milkshake. And so if they called home, say they were at a friend's and they called home and they used the word milkshake in a sentence that told me or their mom that we needed to ask them questions yes or no questions about what's going on. One being, do you really mean that you want a milkshake? Yes or no. Or are you in a sticky situation? Yes or no. And by their answers, then we could help them. So your job tonight is to not only come up with a code word, but a signal, okay? And remember, code words and signals are private. They're only for your family. They're no for no one else to know. Not your friends, not um, your neighbors, only your parents and people in your family. So develop a code word tonight and signals that you can use to help keep you safe. All right, and I also want you to remember your body belongs to you and you get to decide who touches you where they touch you when they touch you and how they touch you and you can say no to any kind of touch that you do not like even to someone older than you all right friends hey thanks for joining me in today's safety lesson I hope there was something that you learned that was new or at least it reminded you of something that you used to know and I'd like you to do the attached flip grid. And I hope you're having a great day.